See, it's funny because the the idea of Tom, if he is an STP, uh, you know, either ESTP or ISTP, if he is one of those, it almost seems sort of funny to me because I, I sort of have these biases or my own archetypes or conceptions in my head of what those types sort of look like. And uh, part of it would make sense to me because he, he, he definitely seems... Uh, definitely has struck me over the years as somebody who's able to be full of mirth about stuff, just able to, you know, yuck it up and laugh with people. Um, but I've always kind of had it in my head that STPs were a bit more on the edgier, like, just more gruff, you know, rough around the edges sort of side, and he, yeah, still has been cool, so... Well, the humor thing also says ESTP over ISTP in general to me. Because ISTPs, I don't think, are... But I think humor has more to do with any than with SE. And I think that ESTP with any in the six ends up <coughs> much different than ISTP with any in the... I mean, any ESP with any in the fifth does much better. I'm sorry, any in the eighth does much better than ISTP with any in the seventh. Eighth slot. That's where I have ESE. It's where INFJ has um, SI. So that's why INFJ takes good care of themselves. You know, INFJ you know, takes good care of themselves. They do, but they don't do it directly. It's the thing. They they do it by by getting somebody else to take care of them. Hmm. Yeah, that that hasn't happened for me yet, though. Well, kid, you know, that homeschooling, you don't meet a lot of chicks at homeschool. Right. <laughs> if you had gone to high school, you probably would be into your 12th long-term relationship already. Well, if it was over 12, it would be in uh, Utah. If I went to high school in Utah, I'd be into my 12th concurrent marriage, is what you mean. <laughs> no. That, well, it depends on who you, you have are. To, you have to do your uh, mission first. I always, I, always, I always poke fun at Tom because he was raised Mormon. So. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you got to do your mission first. When we... Um, we're in Utah for nationals. At the airport, I saw a big family of blonde people holding a sign that said, Welcome home, elder somebody. And I think what that means is that they're, they're coming back from their mission, so now they're officially, their name, their title is elder. Uh, if I remember right, yeah, that's... After you go to your mission and you get back, you actually... You actually become an elder while you're over there. That's kind of one of the things that... You, happen. Beyond mm. that, I, I've never got my mission side. So I'm not that religious either, so it's kind of one of those things where I know from talking with friends and family who've done so. Well, I would like to petition them for an honorary elderhood. Just just as an honorific. As a friend of the Mormon people, I've, I've been designated honorific elder. Do you think they'll go for it? I don't know. In this day and age, anything's well, possible. You're a Mormon. You know everything about them, therefore. I... Did you forget those rules? Those are the rules. If you're a Mormon, you know everything about Mormonism. <laughs> I'm more Jack Mormon than Mormon. Mm. Uh, I think it's prime time that you two bond over your love of rodents, because Eric has... I think currently you have a, what is it, a gerbil farm going on? I got two guinea pigs, but I'm anticipating that they will reproduce. <laughs> I've, I've had rats? a mul I've had many... Are your rats still alive, Tom? Huh? Are your rats still alive, or did they die? No, the last pair died, oh, well, almost about a year or two ago. Of a broken heart? No, old age. Mm. It's 
It's probably all the saturated fats. You're feeding them crackers all the time. Actually, I wasn't just feeding them crackers. I was feeding them just about anything. I, I had a five-gallon bucket full of rat food. It was like uh, <coughs> a mix of uh, like uh, parrot seed, rat feed, gerbil feed, just miscellaneous feed that's generally good and healthy for them. Candy bars? <laughs> I won't feed him candy bars. I'd occasionally feed him like gummies <laughs> and uh, peeps after they've hardened <laughs> and become unedible to humans. Hmm. Did they eat them? And also uh, bagels when they become rock hard. Hmm. Well, the guinea pigs don't eat anything unusual, particularly. They eat lots of different kinds of leaves. They eat different grasses. They like bamboo a lot. They like bamboo leaves a lot. And then I buy them at the grocery store. Romaine lettuce is their favorite. They also enjoy carrots, corn, other kinds of lettuce. But not kale. They don't like kale. They're sensible. And, uh, and they, you know, but they eat, like, vegetables. Basically, they like beets. They're okay with beets. They're kind of picky. I know my, I know my rats. They like the taste of beets. We didn't have them very often, but they, they were very fond of beets because it was more of a treat for them. Mm. Practically, because it was very rare for us to have leftover beets. Oh well, the only reason I buy vegetables is for the guinea pigs. Otherwise, I have no reason to have vegetables. Uh, they they eat it all, the vegetables. But um, yeah, I have and my veg, my guinea pigs are free range guinea pigs too. They they have a spot over there by the cactus, and it's got like I've put a bunch of like boards and stuff. It's kind of like a a shanty lean to. It's a guinea pig shanty, and <laughs> and they just stay in general in that area. But they can go, come and go wherever they want to, you know. See, th this is why I had him come on, because I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, he might get a kick out of Eric, I think. <laughs> he, he might, might, it, it was like, you guys, are, in my mind, you guys are different, but in another way, you get, you're almost like kindred spirits. <laughs> it's just the, some of the conversations he's uh, had with me over the years, just sort of the funny different ideas, uh, talking about stealth the uh, funny different ideas he's had about stuff. In a way, it almost reminded me of you. It wasn't as, like, as zany or as, uh, as centric as some of your stuff, but uh, it was still just kind of similar. Well, um, the STPs and ENTPs do have a certain understanding of each other. As I've, I've come to understand, knowing my drummer Nick, who's an ESTP, uh, ISTPs and ENTPs get along very differently than ESTPs and ENTPs. ISTPs and ENTPs get along where the ISTP is going to tend towards being deferential because in the socionics model, ENTPs are that of the supervisor type. And with ESTP and ENTP, it's, it's a much more collegial socionics relationship. If you buy all that here's, shit. here's the deal, though. If he is an ESTP, why did you have to try to goad him into trying to kill the troll? There was action to be taken, Eric. Well, why didn't you go for it, Eric? That's why I said There's ISTP. That's why I said ISTP. But this is the thing about ESTPs. I mean, the function expresses in typical ways and, and in less typical ways. And it depends on, on where the on what the source material is, you know? So, and somebody with a different source material for their life is going to to process that differently. Especially when I, when I learned he was in the military, it makes sense that he's less ready to just kill the troll, right? Because <laughs> the military, their job is to kill a troll if they have to, but to try to find some other solution about it. And as a general rule, right? The military aren't like the cops. The cops think their job, your job, is to prevent them from shooting you for no reason, right? That's what they think. They think it's your job to do everything exactly perfect or else 
it's fine to just kill you because yeah, he didn't follow an order. His finger twitched while his hands were up, you know? Um, so that, that's the difference between the military and the cops. And uh, the military operates in that kind of a way in general. So it would make sense that as the governor, the military leader of that community, he would be hesitant to employ military force wantonly because he's in the military, so he understands the significance of doing so. That's my theory on that. What do you think, Tom? Do you think the, uh, you know, going through boot camp and different stuff like that has uh, curbed your killer instinct? Uh, a little bit, yes, but it, it's kind of one of those things that, that I've kind of been raised for, kind of like that. I, uh -huh. My father wasn't necessarily in the military as he, he joined, but he got discharged honorably because... His recruiter made the mistake of promising him to get in this position up at Fort, at the Hill Air Force Base that the day he signed up and was sworn in, they did away with, so he got out. <laughs> but a lot of my fa uh like uh, my grandpa and my dad's, uh, on my mother's side of the family was in the Army, and my grandpa on my mother, on my dad's side was in the Navy. So it's kind of one of those things that it's I've learned over the years is I don't look for the easy solution for like just kill the poor thing, just get it done, but try and find a way to keep from ending someone's life versus just ending their life for no reason. <coughs> well, you didn't even threaten him first. Look, dude, you're stealing from us. You're not a fucking tax collector. You're a troll. You're trying to you're going to starve a hundred of our people to death because you feel like the intention of our food. <coughs> you can't possibly eat that much food. Now get the fuck out of here! I'm going to fucking blow your head off. Is a person perfectly sensible response to that troll? He's not an actual government official, whatever that distinction means. I don't know. I call it a tax specifically because it's a fucking troll in the river for Christ's sakes. But because I call it a tax, everyone's like, oh, it must be legitimate, I guess. It's weird. That's how conditioned we are by by governance nonsense. A little bit. A tax could be good and it could be bad. I mean, America originally broke off because they felt how the British was taxing the American colonies was wrong. And yet right. we still use taxes. <laughs> okay, but what was the troll's justification for the tax? It was, he protects you. But how? From what? You can cross the river exactly. just fine without he, he's it. He's that on a rock. That's just what it is. Hey, defend the villages from something that's a little bit more dangerous than a rock. Oh, but yeah, I know. He doesn't defend it. He's just making up lies to justify his stealing shit. Same as the government does. In general. <laughs> I'm not saying there shouldn't be any taxation. I'm saying there should be a limiting principle, right? The taxes should be drawn for certain purposes and spent on those purposes. And it right. should be it should be initiated by the people who want a communal good attained, right? Like, hey, you know what would be cool? Since your town's over there and our town's over here, let's build a road. Our town will chip in a bench and you guys chip in a bit and we'll build it together. Okay, everybody chip in some taxes. Hey, great, now we got a road. Now, that's a one-time deal, right? We just bought something together, and it's useful. And we might have to pay something again to maintain it. But um, I like the idea of taxes that are sourced from actual humans saying this actual problem exists that actually needs to be solved rather than let's come up with something else to do, which is what government does in general. Uh, one of the main problems I see in the government from my point of view is that it's not 100% the, how the taxes are being used but also the budgeting because like right now the military is right now the fiscal year for the military is ending Le the, like the three months leading up to October 1st 
is literally, hey, we have money left over in the budget. We need to spend it before we lose it the next fiscal year. So they're promoting people to spend money on stupid shit. In my supply room, I have boxes of screws, nails, and tech wipes, which are like tissues for wiping down tech and mechanic stuff. And because no a, one owns that a money. Finance unit. Because it's plunder. We don't use nails. We don't use screws. We use rubber bands. You're a finance unit. Yeah. And you have boxes of nails and screws and stuff? Yep. Have you decided to begin nailing together your financial documents? <laughs> but unfortunately, that's not my call. They come to me for the, their supplies, and that's all I have. You, you, you so. got you to gotta be a colonel before you're allowed to handle the nails. <laughs> now, look uh, here, Sergeant Stealth. Look here. Uh... Sergeant Stealth, let's, let, let me be perfectly clear about this. You ordered these nails. I need you to demonstrate that these nails are useful in your work capacity. I want you to start nailing some of these documents to those boards over there. Otherwise, Congress will be on our ass, you see. <laughs> yeah, well, the good news is I wasn't the one who ordered them. It, it was one of the predecessors I took over from. And there's a lot of shit that I, I shake my head at. <laughs> and everyone in my unit that's been in long enough to remember some of the shit that's happened, and they all agree with me that it, it's uh, stupid. That's what happens with plunder. Yeah. Nobody respects plunder. Oh, no, let's not waste that pile of plunder over there. Nobody ever says that. They go, what the hell? It's all stolen money anyway. Let's do whatever the fuck we want with it. All right? They don't feel guilty. You're going to feel guilty for towards. Oh, oh, my God, you're wasting tax dollars. Do you feel guilty towards anybody? No. It's as much yours as it is anybody else's. Wasting on a box of nails. Well, I mean, otherwise it goes back to Congress. What are they going to do with it? Buy a bunch of uh -huh. fucking, I don't know, they... They like let's let's have pureed cash enemas, and that's what they do. They sit on the con congressional <coughs> floor and give each other enemas of pureed cash. Do we let this I, money go back to Congress, or do we ra raid the supply closet, toilet paper the colonel's house? <laughs> I don't know, but all I do know is that like I I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those screws and nails, but. Luckily, Friday, uh, tomorrow, it, I, I really don't have to worry about it because someone else is taking all of it. But the tech wipes? That shit? It, in the supply world, we have this little term called drug deals. That's where we find stuff that's not on the books that we don't need, or we go to someone else who has stuff that we need, and we have stuff they need, and we make trades, we make <laughs> friends. <laughs> There's a story of a supply sergeant who retired with a entire working Blackhawk. <laughs> and all he did was, throughout his career, he would trade for parts. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> every supply sergeant needs to be that good. So now we're getting a now, now we're getting a peek into the uh, into Stealth's inner world, his inner struggle to become the uh, the su the supply room mastermind, so that he can retire with a Osprey. Well, I want to know. I want you to find some creative way to take those nails and screws and keep America safe with them. <laughs> I think it's going to involve shooting them at some Middle Easterners, probably. I think that's what we're See, that just seems for. rude. I thought you could just throw the tech wipes at them. Oh, well, yeah, maybe that would be a little no, easier. Throw the tech wipes, and you're like, listen. Point at the tech wipes, and you're like, if I'm willing to do that, if I'm willing to waste tech wipes 
think about what I'll do to you. And then just walk away. No, no, I was kidding. It's a metaphor. You go, you better clean your shit up. Oh. Like that, right? Otherwise, oh. next time, and then you throw some of the nails and the screws at them. <laughs> I was just kind of thinking, we, the screws and nails could be used as uh, shrapnel for, for uh, as, uh, explosive devices. Yeah. I you should... authorized uh, grenades. Which makes no sense for financing it, but we authorized them. If you have some glue, you can make a big statue of a guy going, Stop! The U.S. Army will kill you. And that might dissuade them. What, so what, you, you say the finance unit has access to grenades? It, it's one of the... It, it's... I'm not sure what, that... What, what do you do when it's like around tax season or something? It's like, hey, we got to shred documents. Don't worry about it. You just love it into the into the file room when you close the door. What, what do you, I mean, but like, what, do you just, are you basically in charge of a space that you put a bunch of stuff in and then it moves in and out stuff? Is that what you do? Uh, kind of. It, uh, I make, my, the main job of a supply service is to maintain the inventory of the overall equipment and clothing of the unit. Or, he hustles dreams. That's what he does. <laughs> I won't say it. hustle... But we can sometimes uh, make dreams come true, or we can just turn them into nightmares. It all depends on how badly you piss us off. <coughs> Fly Sergeant are one of the top five uh, MOSs that you really don't want to fuck with. <laughs> so, like, and I okay. have uh, my two MOSs. I have the supply and fuel, which is the other one. Don't piss off the fueler because they won't give you fuel. So let me ask you this: Does the following kind of thing happen where you have like General Smith says, "Oh, I wanna, I wanna move Battalion C over there, and they're gonna need the following supply changes," and no problem for General Smith. But then General Jones says the same thing, and for him, it's just endless snafu after snafu. If we can't find this, we don't have that. Is that how it goes down like that? If General Jones is a dick. I, I won't necessarily say it's General Jones being a dick. I think it's just more of it's something's been screwing the supply stores are probably just shaking their heads going, oh, God, we have to do this. Right, so General Jones is constantly sending down unnecessary tasks. Would that make General Jones less popular? Is that the thing that makes you uh, in the crosshairs of the supply people? Is if they send down tests like I need you to fill out these forms differently, and now I need you to also do this other thing here that's pointless, and now I want you to to sweep. When you're done, you need to go and sweep. Like, is that is that General Jones? Is that how he pissed you guys off, or what? Uh, no, it, it's more of like um, usually what happens is like the cooks don't give us food, or someone in the unit decides that. Oh, we're just going to form up and chew out supply for not doing anything. Or uh, supply has to issue out a bunch of equipment. When we get back from the field, and they also have to clean their weapons, and it all ha has to be done by close of business and their weapons in the vault. Oh, and no one's going to help them. That's one of the main things that usually pisses off supply. <coughs> Is when we get a ton of like tasks that we gotta get done last minute, and the rest of the company is pretty much going, yeah, so much for you guys. Just handle it yourself. So if if you are a smart like lieutenant or something, and then you see the supply team is in that state, you're gonna jump in and get your guys to come help for a little while, knowing that that you'll you'll have an easier go of getting shit you need later on. Would you say that would be a wise move if you're a smart lieutenant or something? Does, does such stuff happen? Yeah. It, it, in my unit, I, the majority of the LTs that's in my unit, if they got soldiers sitting on their asses playing Pokemon Go <laughs> that, and supply needs help, if they um, enlist help quickly. <laughs> 
Do, do they have, have they have Pokemon much. on army bases? Are there Pokemon on uh, army bases? This is a, it's a fascinating thing. This would be a great question to be a title. Are there Pokemon Go Pokemon on army bases? And we can answer it right a, now. At Fort Douglas, every uh, every single building on Soldier Circle is a Poke Stop. <laughs> Along with, both, with the uh, PTs filled, which my building is when I'm sitting in my office. Sometimes I glitch where I'm staying in the middle of the um, U-shaped building, and I can get both the focus dot from my building and the PT field. Uh, okay, so you're guilty too. This isn't just you observing this behavior. You're in the thick of it. Everyone does. <laughs> I, I played for about a week, and then I got bored of Pokemon Go and actually got Pokemon on the DS. So I, I gave up Pokemon the first week before. When I got sick and tired of all the damn uh, new nations getting added to it and it um, having connection issues. Hmm. Well, my daughter plays it and her boyfriend. I've never played it, but uh, I don't want to start playing it. I, I, I hate to think that it was entertaining enough that I'd actually spend time doing it because, first of all, that would involve some unnecessary exercise. Apparently, you have to walk a little bit when you do that, and that's not really for yes. me. So, there's um, there's a future where, in order to hatch eggs to get Pokemon, you gotta walk so many kilometers, and sometimes that can be rather difficult. Can, can you just drive them? If you move too fast, it freaks out and doesn't track. It thinks you're in a car. So you can't run either. Because that's too fast. You can't run, and you can't drive. You just have to walk. Yep. That's awful. Yep. What? An, uh, that's a did. game. That's a game. You have to yeah, go you gotta, walk. You, you can't turn off your phone. You can't turn off the screen. You have to have it active. With your the app going. Well, the screen has to be on. Your GPS has to be on. You have to be walking at the right speed, for the. Free game put out by the Asian by the Chinese company. Yep. That's fucking awful. Why would anybody play that game? <laughs> a a game that says now, if you wish to advance in the game, you must leave your home and walk. But it's hot that outside. Purpose, it? Huh? That sounds like it defeats the purpose. It's Pokemon, right. stop! Just stop! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great. They, well, they that's that allow you to... caught them all on Game Boy, the old one. Uh, why? Walk. So, yeah. uh, do they do they give extra? Or, or, do they give good Pokemon on army bases? Because Delilah was telling me at Denny's the other night about no. the different spots around LA where they have some places they have good or are known to be hot spots of good Pokemon. One of them is fairly near our house, and Arcadia apparently is known to have good Pokemon. But not I army bases. That, I suggested that my business, the, my employer, become a hotspot. <laughs> I know Why? that when I was playing, the most Pokemon I got while I was there on Fort Douglas was Rattas, Zubats, Pidgeots, or Pidgeotto's and that evolutionary train and Mewtwo's. And that's it. <laughs> no Jigglypuffs? None. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. See, I, I'm, I'm used to being in the position of, you know, if I were to bring up, like, words like Ratatat or whatever, or Rattata, whatever it is, or like Pidgeotto in a conversation, I couldn't bring that up in a conversation with everyone, but because of freaking Pokemon Go, there's like 60-year-olds who are just like, hey, you caught Pidgey yet? Or something, like in some area, and I'm like, you know, a few years back, I would have thought you were a child molester for approaching me and asking me these things, but... Well, Ken, you don't look a lot like a child, I gotta tell you. That's why I said uh, a few years ago, Eric. I was a child a few years ago. That's true. I forget how oh, young yeah. you are. Then again, I did start growing a beard at 11, so maybe I wasn't. 
I, I would want to point out that a few years ago, that if you walked up to someone and said, hey, did you catch a uh, Pikachu over here? I, I kid you not, the, the average conversation would go, what the hell is a Pikachu? That's what the hell No, people still knew Pokemon. Everybody knew Pokemon. They just didn't know it as a game. They would say, what do you mean? It doesn't, there's no, they'd say, no, Pokemon Go doesn't exist yet. That would be their response. Anyway, People thank you for watching Talking About Bad People.